let me give you this. I got to give you guys this. I was, I'm going to give you a little peek, um, if the Lord say the same, of what I was going to share with you next week. But no, no, actually, let me, let me take you to Proverbs chapter one. I just need to, I just need to show you this because this is crazy because it's like wisdom is always sitting there trying to help us. Proverbs chapter one, verse 20. I just, I just need you, I just need to, I just need to show you this because this is, this is, and this is setting us up for a lot. I mean, that uh, we're going to be talking about the parables of the uh, of the virgins. We're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to talk about a lot. So get ready. All right. Proverbs chapter one, verse 20. Look what it says. Wisdom cry it without. She uttereth her voice in the streets, meaning wisdom be dancing and shouting. Please don't go here. Please don't stay home. Don't do it. Verse 21, she cried in the chief places of, of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city, she uttereth her words, saying, look at verse 22. How long, you simple ones. Y'all know what that mean? <laughs> How long, y'all crazy ones who don't really have a lot of wisdom or information in your head? <laughs> She's saying, will you love simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge? Verse 23. Turn you at my reproof, me turn at my correction, because wisdom will tell you don't date this person. Wisdom will say that. <laughs> and then watch this. I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Now, verse 24, because I have called and you refused because now what made what made when wisdom is talking here, what made the person refuse? Those emotions. Good. Y'all listen. I will make known my words, but because I called and you refuse, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded it. Meaning I was there trying to help you when your emotional decisions got you in trouble. Verse 25 says, but ye have sought set a knot at my counsel, meaning you ain't want to listen to me and with none of my reproof. Look at verse. Y'all read verse 26. <laughs> I would yes I also will laugh at your calamity don't that seem cruel I will laugh at your calamity and will mock you when fear come I will mock you when the police is following you <laughs> isn't that crazy <laughs> verse 27 when your fear come you see how I keep talking about fear so remember we were talking about how when you are operating like I said, it, it's amazing that when wisdom is not working in your life, you, you're just, you're just you're, that fear, that mo you're just like, mm, you're restless. But when you make a good decision, even when everything don't look good at the moment, you still got some peace. Man, listen, I'm telling you, I remember, can I tell you a little story? I remember um, 2001, me and a friend, we went to a music conference in Orlando, Florida. And, and y'all know those little timeshare uh them timeshare things so you know we were blessed um our our, our spiritual leader i just became uh the music minister at our church and i wanted to really get some more knowledge so he sent me and my friend to florida to this conference and paid everything for us and we were down there and one day we had a free thing to go to 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 the timeshare thing and to go to the disney y'all know how that they do that so we went and i'm thinking you know i was broke back then i had i had no money I mean, I, it was the grace of God that I was able to eat those three days. We get to Florida and they start showing us all these houses. Oh, my Lord. My emotions was like, oh, I want that because I got tired of living with the rats and roaches and stuff. I'm like, listen, I want something nice. So when they started showing me them nice houses, I was like, I want it. And they were like, the payments can only be a couple hundred dollars a month. Blah, blah, blah. Just sign right here. And. You know, I was doing good. I was like, nope, you know, I, I don't have, I, I can't afford this. I knew it. So I'm like, nope. So what they did was they went in and they, they tried to get like these, these, uh, these are uh, these young ladies to come in, uh, and, and, you know, to try to give, give a look to the young guys to make the young guys lose their decision. And my friend, when he started, when he saw the young ladies, uh, he was like, where do I sign? <laughs> That was emotional. I'm sitting there with my my with my pen. I'm sitting there. I'm like, I'm not about to do this. And then at first, I was like, you know. And then I was thinking, I was like, well, faith come by hearing. You, you know, you know. We started talking about. 
<laughs> we start talking, you know, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for. You see how you see how my emotions are now connected to the word. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. So I'm like, okay, where I said I literally signed it. I signed this thing and I had my first timeshare. Come on, y'all. Y'all clap y'all hands. Let's oh Lord. No support. <laughs> Nobody clap. And I'm sitting there signing. I'm like, yes. I'm trusting God with this decision. <laughs> I get back to the room. Something came over me and said, you know good and well, you cannot afford this. It was just as calm. It wasn't thou, my son. I didn't hear no King James Version God talking to me. I just heard, you know you can't afford this. It was just, <laughs> it was so simple. And I was in my room, and, I, and, and the fear, like what we just read, that that fear of uh, this is a bad and wisdom was screaming like we just read wisdom was screaming cancel that home cancel it and it was screaming so loud that I was so disturbed I had no peace and I just I told my friend I said I gotta get I, I gotta cancel this so I called them back and I can't, I was like, um, unfortunately, it was two days later. I called them back. I said, unfortunately, I'm, I'm not going to be able to afford it. Oh, well, we can do this. Well, we can lower your rates and everything. And I completely, completely got rid of it. And I'm going to be honest with you. I was disappointed because I had to go back home to a house that I, did, uh, that I did not like to live in at the time. And I was like, man, Lord, when is it going to be my season? You know, I was kind of feeling sad, you know, like, God, did I just miss a blessing? And I heard, no, <laughs> that was not a blessing. And what's so funny is I, to this day, I am so happy that I did not keep that because I would still, while I'm preaching to y'all, will be paying back taxes and loans on a place that I don't even think I would have been going once a year. And do you know how many people got them, them things and they don't even travel and they just paying free money? That's not wisdom. Now, I use that story to let you know that when, when Proverbs chapter 1 says, I also will laugh at your calamity and I will mock you when fear cometh. He kept, I had the fear. When the fear was coming, um, wisdom was like, listen, this fear you're feeling is because you know that this is not a good decision. There was a story um, of someone who was dating a young lady and they literally when they were dating, everything in them was saying, this is not the person. They continued to date. They got engaged. The day of the wedding came. This is not a joke. The day of the wedding came. The people came into the building. The groom is in the back. The bride is there. And wisdom was talking so loud to this young man that he ran and left. He said, this is not the woman I'm supposed to marry. And I'm not going to go ahead and carry on with this service. Left the folks in the building. What's so funny, though, when it happened, everybody was like, oh, man, he's stupid. He just now he is married with the person wisdom feel good with. And he's such at peace. <laughs> But if he would have listened to his emotions, <laughs> he would have told wisdom, shut up. I'm going to do this for my parents' sake. I'm going to do this because my friends are out there. Even though everything in me is, is feeling sick. We've already invested all this money into this reception. We got to carry it out. And when them folks would have ate that steak and went home, <laughs> He would have came home to fear because wisdom would have been laughing. I don't want wisdom laughing at me. Wisdom is so loud that it's like I'm going to cry. I'm going to scream when you're making a bad decision. I'm going to scream it so loud. I'm going to send people at the right time to tell you, what are you doing? Don't do it. Wisdom is so amazing that God is like, listen, listen, listen. The reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want you to live in fear. 
Now, the reason why I've been harboring on the wisdom thing is because sometimes we skip, we try to skip these sessions. We get knowledge and we don't understand the knowledge. We don't understand that the, he, that, but that young man probably didn't have the understanding of the kind of of the woman that he was going to marry. Well, he probably didn't understand why he was feeling what he was feeling. He probably didn't have that, but wisdom was still crying. Like, listen, you don't understand it now, but you're going to understand it later. The thing I love about God is with God, sometimes God will tell you to do stuff. He will give you knowledge. That means knowledge. God will say, go here. And you don't have any understanding of why he's telling you to go. But this is where we trust God. We just go because he said it, not because we understand it. And then when we get there, then he gives us the understanding of why he told us to go right after we made the decision. That's what faith is. But when it comes to practical life, get the knowledge, understand the knowledge you got, and then make a decision. And most people, this is where we struggle. So again, every area in your life, take get some knowledge, get understanding, and apply wisdom. I'm looking at the chairs. I'm looking at y'all sitting in these chairs. And the reason why there's no conflict, there's no fighting going on, is because you have a clear understanding that that chair is supposed to hold you, and you are, have applied wisdom, and you're sitting in it. And that's why there is such harmony. It should be like that with every other area in our life. So when it comes to God, we got to get back to the place where we say to the Lord, you, can't, you, you know what, Lord, I'm tired of being ignorant because if I keep staying ignorant, you won't give me understanding. And if I don't have understanding, I'm going to keep making dumb, foolish decisions every minute. Life is all about choices. There is people right now who got knowledge that they're going to die one day. And they're still don't have an understanding of how fragile their life is. Nah, I'm going to keep, you know, playing with God. I'm going to keep doing my dirt. And then, and then I'm going to come around. The thing they don't understand is they don't know when that time is up. And we're going to be talking about on, um, I believe on next week uh, on the spiritual one, we're going to go into uh, really understanding why God has got you here because we don't get that that's one of our assignments here at the church is to make sure that everyone here got their ticket to eternity that everyone here has an understanding of their assignment why they are here and that everybody will take responsibility and you can only take responsibility when you have knowledge understanding and wisdom you got to know that was a bad choice wisdom was telling me don't go here and I list I didn't listen let me bear the consequences. That's called taking responsibility, which will actually make you more wise next time. Because you're going to be like, I'm tired of, I'm tired of this. <laughs> I'm Seriously, you, you get to the point where you're like, I'm so sick and tired of listening to my own emotions because these emotions got me in so much mess. And God loves us so much. He's like, listen, I love you so much. I will send, man, I can tell you a countless of stories where people, God sent people, he had people text me, he had people call, I mean, not text back then, but he had people call me, he had people pop up in my life at the right time, right before I was about to make the dumbest decision. And they would come and say something and they would just stick. And I'm like, why would they say that? It was really God t sending that person to say, don't do this, you're about to go through hell if you make this decision. And I would still be like, well, you know, I'm covered by the blood. You know, we, you know, we start, and then we fought, well, God, why did that happen to me? that <laughs> that was because you didn't listen to me